What would you call a criminal who commits an act so awful, so absolutely heinous, that even the death penalty is too good for them? Well, in the world of this light novel, you'd call them a hero. Hello everybody, welcome to another light novel review. Justice R. Stone here today talking about volume number one of the light novel Sentenced to Be a Hero. This one is written by Rocket Shokai and is released officially in English by Yen On. If you want to buy a copy of this one, I'll have links down below. This one currently has five volumes in Japan. It was just announced in July that it is going to get an anime adaptation. And it was also on the most recent Kono Light novel, Gasugoi. So there's quite a bit to talk about this one. And, um, well, frankly, it's pretty decent. In Sentence to Be a Hero, we follow main character Zylo. He's been sentenced to be a hero. Essentially, in the world that he occupies, this world has waves of demon attacks. And it's not so much demons in the way that a lot of other light novels do them in terms of like, they're from a demonic realm or they're demon lord and all this. It's almost more like some kind of pestilence. It is like an infection that actually affects the existing fauna and animals in this world and changes them and alters them into these demonic creatures. And even demon lords in this particular world, all they have to do is be a creature that is a little bit more intelligent than the others, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. It is that unifying force that brings all of these separate monsters together. But there's no real intelligence to this. There's no real plan. And so in a lot of ways, this is already a very different kind of light novel in that they aren't fighting a intelligent demon horde. They are, in fact, well, it, it's almost like just trying to fight back nature gone absolutely mad. And in order to combat these demonic waves, we have two different things at work. We have the actual knights, the holy guard that are elite warriors, and then we have the heroes. These individuals that have committed crimes so awful that they have been sentenced to be a hero, which means basically that they get sent to the front lines and have to take on the most awful and impossible missions in the fight against the demonic plague. And this is where the book is kind of interesting because it isn't just the fact that it is taking that idea of a hero and twisting it. There's a whole lot of using light novel, particularly I would say isekai type tropes and just altering them a little bit so that they have different meanings. Obviously the term hero, very different. The term demon lord, how it's applied here, very different. Even as I said, the demonic invasion is quite different. There's a couple of other things that we'll get to. Zylo is a character who was once a holy knight. In fact, he was actually teamed up with a goddess. In this world, goddesses are organic weapons, essentially taking the form of typically humanoid females who then summon miracles. I won't get into the background, but it is something to do with Zylo's goddess that landed him in this mess where he is now a hero. This also takes that whole notion of immortality, the notion of being able to be resurrected, something that we see often in, in fantasy isekai type light novels and makes it awful. <laughs> it's kind of like what Log Horizon was talking about, but taken to absolute horrible extremes where every single time someone is resurrected, they lose a part of themselves. They lose memories. They lose kind of their personality. Eventually, 
they lose all sense of themselves and effectively become mindless automatons that are only driven by what they are ordered to do. It's considered worse than death because at least death ends it. Whereas there's really no telling just what kind of an existence there is when you as an individual, everything that makes you an individual is absolutely gone. And because this whole concept of a hero obviously has been inverted, we have a lot of unrepentant bastards who are on Xylo's team. Either that, or they're just absolutely insane. But I gotta tell you, that was probably the thing that I loved about this book the most. I don't often say with light novels that the thing that made me really invested in the book, that made me like it, that made me want to read more, that made me laugh the most, were the supporting characters. But in fact, in this book, that is one of those reasons. Part of what changes the fortunes of Penal Hero Unit 9004 is the arrival of a goddess, a being that is possessed of her own sense of self and who decides that Xylo will be her chosen knight. Something, of course, that all the other actual holy knights are completely disgusted and aghast at. But because of how goddesses have been elevated in this world, nobody can really do anything about it. And the goddess in this particular case is named Teorita, and, well, she's the lolly character you see on the front cover. And I gotta be honest, that uh, front cover kind of initially turned me off this book a little bit, because I'm just not into the whole lolly thing. But actually, this kind of makes it to good effect, and thankfully, despite the cover seeming to sexualize Teorita, that never happens in the book. In fact, a lot of the very cringy things that happen with lollies and things that are said about lollies and that are, yeah, not cool, don't happen in this book. In fact, what's kind of interesting about this book is that once again, it sort of subverts a very typical trope, particularly one that applies to lolly type characters. Goddesses want praise. They want to be worshipped. And of course, in typical light novel style, their main form of desiring worship is to have head pats and be told how wonderful they are. And that sounds super cringe, but it kind of is interesting, actually, as the book goes on because it takes this very trope type thing and A, we actually seen a grown woman goddess be treated this way and it actually made me glad that Teorita was a lolly because it's even creepier when it's a grown woman. I didn't think I'd ever hear myself say those words, but here we are. Uh, I write it down. It's, it's going to be a justice first, but yeah. It was actually creepier. And this whole idea, though, of this seeking worship, seeking recognition and everything, it's actually something that Xylo hates. And it becomes kind of a central idea and central theme to both he and Teorita's characters and their relationship. And this whole idea of sacrificing yourself merely for the praise and adoration of others. And so it's kind of interesting that this thing that is typically a very tropey thing and is very often cringe is actually used to address some rather interesting philosophical arguments about self-sacrifice and about what it is to be, well, I, I mean, I'd call it a hero, but of course hero in this book's a completely other thing, but, but you know, it, it, what makes you as a person want to do that? And is it a good thing or a bad thing? Additionally, two of the other sort of secondary characters that we see a lot of in the unit that Xylo's a part of is King Norgal. And <laughs> here's the thing. He's not a king. He just thinks he's the king. 
like I said, he's insane. He's absolutely gifted with creating magical sigils that, you know, power things up, that allow magic to be focused through items and stuff like that. He, he is, like Zylo actually says, he, he would be a prodigy in any other way, but he thinks he's the king. And in fact, most of his teammates actually refer to him as your majesty because they've realized it's so much easier just to play along. And it's hilarious because again, a character like this you would think would be just played for laughs and people would poke fun at him and everything else. But the thing is, is that these characters find themselves in like the worst situations, right? Hopeless situations and no one's coming to help them because they are heroes. That's one of the things that I would say actually amps kind of the action aspect of this book. But what's great and hilarious, and once again, an interesting thing this book does is that it takes this character that normally would be like a joke, but because he sees himself as the king, he sees himself as being obligated to be a source of pride, to be a source of inspiration, to lead the charge as it were. And so in some of their most dire moments, it's actually King Norgal that actually rallies what few resources they have and instills like this sense of calm and this sense of confidence. And it's just so much fun, frankly. And then there is Tatsuya. Tatsuya is a hero that has been reincarnated, not reincarnated, but has actually been resurrected so many times that he has pretty much lost all sense of self. His conversations are nothing more than grunts. He pretty much needs to be told what to do and then pointed in a direction and off he goes. But there is just something about Tatsuya and the way that he's written in this book that I I just loved, like there is one scene near the end of this book that I laughed out loud and it was a Tatsuya moment. And I won't get into details because I don't want to wreck it. And these are just the, the first couple. There's actually a couple of other members of the unit that all of them have their own unique personalities, their own unique abilities, their own quirks and like there's Sav, who is this ridiculous marksman, but pretty much never shuts up and just is always calling Xylo bro. And <laughs> it, again, a lot of this stuff, as I'm saying it out loud, it actually sounds maybe a little bit off and cringy, but overall, you know what? I actually really like this book. And as I said, I, I think I liked it because it took a lot of stuff that I'm very familiar with in light novels and just did something a little bit different with it. There's even elements of Isekai outside of the tropes that it borrows that suggest that this world itself has Isekai elements. For instance, Zylo actually says that Tatsuya is believed to have been summoned from another world and that it was actually the fact that he ticked off the goddess who summoned him that landed him sentenced as a hero. So. I really enjoyed that this book took a bunch of stuff that I'm really used to and that gets used a lot in light novels and did something a little bit different with it. And then because you have these kind of unrepentant bastards as your main characters, they're a lot of fun. It's, it's just like the author allows them just to be wild and crazy and literally insane at certain points. I mean, the one guy, Dota, is literally a kleptomaniac. He is a master thief who steals like crazy and doesn't even know why he steals things half the time. He just has an impulse to do it. Add into all of this some interesting undercurrents as to why the hero program actually exists. Some questions as to whether the demon plague is really just a natural thing or whether there's something more to it. There's a lot of undercurrents that help to drive this story forward, but at the end of the day, man, I really like this one for the characters. I really enjoyed reading them. 
I, you know, it, it it's surprising to me because there's not a lot of times I say that about light novels and especially like secondary characters, but they're all given some really great chances to shine. They're all so different from one another, but yet they're all so entertaining. Overall, Sentenced to be a Hero, I really like this one. I, I can kind of see why maybe it's getting some recognition and some hype. You know, Kono Light Novel Gasugoi, it's getting an anime. I, I kind of get it. And I get that it really kind of scratches that adventure fantasy itch and does it in a just enough different way that it feels fresher. So, hey, thank you so much for watching the video. And if you've watched it all the way to the end, that's pretty amazing. And I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this one a like. I know everybody says it. Give a like, subscribe, buy my stuff. We're all just trying to survive here, people. And I do appreciate it. And I like to see that all of you enjoy what I'm doing. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in one of my future videos. Till then. Bye-bye for now.